Welcome everyone, my name is Daryl Calhorn and I'm an ASC Master Certified Trainer with Napa Auto Tech. Today we're going to review the best installation practices of thermal management product replacement on a Tesla Model S. We are fortunate to have Chris Salvo from Electrified Garage and Drew Conkling from Gates. Yeah, thanks for having us Daryl. Thanks for being here. Here to show us how to replace the coolant hose, an electric water pump, and a coolant control valve. It's important to demystify electric vehicles and understand what they are and what they are not. EVs have far fewer moving parts than an internal combustion engine equipped vehicle, but they do still have moving parts that wear, ultimately fail, and need replacement just like other vehicles. EV thermal management systems consist of coolant hose, electric water pumps, and coolant control valves, as well as an air conditioning system. Note that I said water pumps, plural, and note that there is a significant increase in the complexity as well as the quantity of these hoses found on EVs. We previously looked at and replaced one of these coolant hoses as well as one of these electric water pumps on this Tesla Model S. Now in our third installment, we will replace one of these coolant control valves. Gates coolant control valves utilize innovative materials and designs to help ensure motors and batteries are running at temperatures that are not only effective and efficient, but also the safest. And all of these are available through your local Napa store. So now we're going to rely on Chris's expertise and years of experience working on Teslas to walk us through the installation process. Hey guys, this is Chris from Electrified Garage. When working on an electric vehicle, it's important to isolate the high voltage system. This ensures that no one gets hurt while working on the vehicle. After safety isolating the high voltage system, we're going to carefully raise the vehicle to drain the coolant before replacing any of the parts. Once the coolant is drained, we'll head back over to the front to remove the trim panels and access the parts we're going to replace. Now we're going to show you how to take these panels off and isolate the high voltage battery. These come off pretty easily, you don't actually need any tools, you just grab and pull. Now that the panels are off, we need to access the 12 volt battery, which is underneath where the cabin filter is. So Travis is going to pop the rivets, we'll take out the filter housing, and you'll get access to the 12 volt battery and the fireman's loop. So this is gonna be the high voltage interlock loop. We need to disconnect that and that disables the high voltage. And then once that's removed, we're now gonna disconnect the negative terminal on the battery and the high voltage system will be disabled. So now we're gonna remove all these carpeted panels and the mat in the middle so we can access the fasteners to remove this tub and gain access to all the parts we're gonna be replacing. And I call this the microwave. Looks like a microwave. <laughs> so lastly, we're gonna take the reservoir cap off. This way it'll drain the coolant properly and we won't have you know, any surprises when we open up the hose underneath. Now we're gonna raise the vehicle and remove the underbelly tray and then start draining the coolant out. So now we need to remove all the trim clips and some of the bolts so we can remove this lower panel and then we can get access to the coolant hoses and start draining the coolant. Instead of a traditional thermostat, they use control valves to direct where the coolant is going to go, whether it's to cool the battery or to cool the drive unit, or to heat the battery or the drive unit if it's cold out. So there's three hoses that need to be removed, one electrical connector, and one mounting bracket. Connectors on, hose clamps are in, fasteners are down. The next step is to refill the cooling system. It's important to make sure that the cooling system is properly bled of all air to prevent cavitation of the pumps and sensor malfunction, which could lead to major problems. The last thing that we need to do is to reinstall the front panels and we're done. We can see that the repair process on an EV is a little different from a standard ICE vehicle. It's important to follow proper safety guidelines and installation procedures to ensure you perform a proper repair. With the continued growth we're seeing in electric vehicles, it's important to stay abreast of this trend as well as this growing market opportunity. Thanks and keep an eye out for our next installment soon.